The virtual CPE, or VCPE, is quickly gaining market traction and is now considered the prime candidate for initial commercial deployment of NFV, especially for business services. In this video, we will review the various factors service providers should consider to ensure optimal VCPE deployment. We will first take a look at the current status of network functions virtualization, NFV, in the market, and the emergence of VCPE. We will then review the various VCPE implementation options that are available for service providers and see what needs to be considered when planning such deployment to avoid pitfalls and ensure optimal results. Let's begin by reviewing the state of NFE. There's a wide consensus within the industry that the networks of tomorrow must be agile, efficient, and well orchestrated. Service providers need their networks to be programmable to enable automated and speedy service delivery along with a lucrative cost structure. This trend drives NFE and software-defined networking SDN from theory to practice at an accelerated pace. NFE involves the migration of networking functions from vendor-specific proprietary hardware appliances to software hosted on standard compute infrastructure. SDN replaces distributed protocols with centralized, dynamic, and programmatic management of network elements. In a little over two years, NFE has become a collaborative industry effort in which service providers and vendors engage in clearly defined proofs of concept of productized solutions. Demonstrating an overwhelming market acceptance, NFE is currently in trials by various operators around the world and is expected to enter a phase of commercial deployments from 2016 onwards. An Infinetic survey among leading service providers listed the virtual CPE for business services as the top-rated use case, both for NFE deployment in general and for revenue generation. The distributed approach to NFE or DNFE places virtualized networking functions, VNFs, wherever it makes the most functional and economic sense, be that at the data center, point of presence, or the customer edge. Key criteria for VNF placement include feasibility, performance, economics, and policy. So what is vCPE? The virtualized CPE is a new approach to customer premises equipment. What once has been a collection of single-purpose hardware-based devices at each customer location has been transformed into virtualized appliances that can be dynamically added or dropped as needed. Physical and virtualized vCPE functionalities are divided between the customer site and the network to ensure maximum flexibility and performance. It should be noted that some CPE hardware is expected to remain at the customer edge. The network-located functionality at the provider edge or data center can also be shared among multiple users following a multi-tenant unit model. It's no wonder that the vCPE is seen as the ideal candidate to test the waters of NFE and the programmable network concept. Enterprise CPEs are both CapEx and OpEx intensive because of their huge quantities and the complexity involved in their deployment and maintenance. Conventional appliance-based CPEs mean slow, expensive deployment processes, which are no longer acceptable in today's market. In contrast, the NFE-enabled vCPE allows service providers to roll out new services quickly and make timely service modifications and upgrades. As a result, carriers can stay ahead of their competition, shorten their time to revenue, and maintain customer satisfaction. In short, vCPE promises service providers increased revenues and lower costs. There are various views on the placement of virtualized vCPE functionalities. Let's review the three main scenarios. This is a simple scenario, using only a basic switch router as the physical device at the customer premises, while all virtualized functions reside at the data center. Service providers can deploy vCPE software packages from specific vendors, which include pre-selected service applications. Alternatively, they can service chain network functions that are sourced separately to fit their needs. The most likely use of this approach would be in the SME services market, in which speed and performance requirements can be fully supported by a vCPE residing in the cloud. In this scenario, both types of vCPE functionalities, physical and virtualized, are placed at customer insights, while no VNFs are deployed in a central network location. A recommended way to implement this would be to use a network interface device or NID with an integrated compute platform such as an x86 server. 
This platform acts as the NFV infrastructure on which VNFs run. Another way would be to use a standalone server that is co-located with the NID. The problem with such a solution is that its per-application traffic handling is less than optimal. It also can't support traffic offload, where some of the traffic processing is performed in the hardware to increase speed and reduce delay. Such centerless implementation fits early NFV deployment stages, allowing service providers to launch NFV-based services without heavy investment in full-scale data center upgrades or network redesign. Here, virtualized functions are placed wherever their performance, cost, and policy compliance are optimal, either at the customer edge or at the network. In this scenario, VNFs residing in different locations can be dynamically ordered, configured, and chained to meet customer business needs. Both scenarios B and C are based on the DNFE model. They are particularly suited for value-added services that have high networking costs and strict performance requirements. For example, international business services. Placing at least some virtualized functionality at the customer location is a reasonable solution to avoid bandwidth inefficiency and degradation in application performance. Function relocation may have unintended effects on various aspects of service quality. First, service providers should consider the bandwidth cost of moving functionality deeper to the network. Excess bandwidth requirements could have a critical effect on service delivery in areas still served by relatively low-speed connections, such as DSL. Next, there is the issue of security. Does moving the VNF to the network expose sensitive end-user data? For example, an encryption application located anywhere but the customer premises doesn't provide adequate protection because traffic can be intercepted in an unsecure access segment. In addition, critical functions must remain operative even when the access link is down. Hosting IP PBX or router functions at the PE or data center would result in an inability to locally place calls or deliver traffic in case of network failure. Service providers should also ensure that the delay that is added by the network for functions based at the data center is acceptable. This is a critical factor when engineering delay-sensitive workflows, for example, for financial applications such as ALGO training. In some cases, insufficient bandwidth in the access link or excessive delay lead to a severe drop in performance. A firewall might be affected by frequent session timeouts due to packet loss and reordering. The likelihood of such a scenario rises considerably when the traffic needs to travel all the way to the data center. Finally, testing and troubleshooting applications need to accurately measure end-to-end -end service quality and localize faults starting from service handoff. When such a function resides at the data center, it cannot reliably tell whether a certain problem is the result of faults in the access link, traffic handling, or the user traffic itself. As a result, identifying and fixing the problem becomes a lengthy and expensive process, if at all feasible, which adversely affects quality of experience. The bottom line is that functions should be located so they provide optimal flexibility, agility, and performance. So let's recap. The virtual CPE is a prime candidate for initial commercial deployment of NFE, especially for business services. For service providers, vCPE's sweet spot lies in hardware abstraction and the ability to carry out shorter and more flexible deployment cycles for new services. When implementing the vCPE architecture, there are several options for VNF placement in the data center, at the customer edge, or a combination of both, each fitting a different scenario. When planning vCPE deployments, service providers need to consider how function location affects critical issues, such as bandwidth efficiency, security, survivability, performance, diagnostics, and quality of experience. RAD's award-winning DNFE offering supports any of the vCPE implementation scenarios described in this presentation. This multi-layered offering is part of RAD's Service Assured Access Solutions and includes ETX2i Layer 2 and Layer 3 NIDs with a powerful x86 platform for hosting virtual network functions at the customer edge, the MyNID Miniature Programmable NID for downloading demarcation and networking applications, RADview Comprehensive Management and Orchestration for Access Networks, and Special virtual functions available via RAD's DNFE Alliance, an ecosystem of application developers and system integrators. This offering is designed to improve the way service providers compete. It enables service agility to minimize time to revenue, complete visibility of network performance for greater operational efficiency, 
and better quality of experience to reduce churn and lower total cost of ownership. For more information on this subject, download the white paper, Best Practices for VCPE Deployment, at www.rad.com.